and the dua that you have should be in Arabic, which can consist even of few verses, few lines, which you can also translate in a khutbah. So there is no harm at all. In fact, people should be encouraged so that they get guidance. It should be given in the local language, except the few parts I mentioned. It should be in Arabic, which can also be translated. It's in India, most parts of India, and those mosques controlled by the Indian immigrants abroad, where the khutbah is only in Arabic. A few mosques have a pre khutbah a new thing, pre khutbah which is in the local language. A few mosques have translation of the khutbah after the Juma Salah. Therefore, I request and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he also give hidayah to the people in India that even in India we have the khutbah in the local language so that we get guidance every week during Jummah. Brother Zakir, Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Abdul Qadar. I am a businessman come social worker. As you said, we Muslims pray five times Allah Ta'ala. And then you also explain in Miraj events how five times prayer was fixed. But we see some of this, they do three times a day. Is there, is there any justification in doing so? The brother asked that, as I mentioned, that how five times is compulsory, and they will mention the Quran. Some people offer three times Salah. Is it justified? According to the Quran, you should pray five times Salah every day. But there are certain concessions given to you. The verses are recited in which five times is compulsory. Surah Hud, chapter 11, verse 114. Surah Isra, chapter 17, verse 78. Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 130, and Surah Rum, chapter 30, verse 17 and 18. If you read these verses, these verses clearly say you should pray five times. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you concession certain times. As it's mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 101, that when you travel, you can shorten your salah. As I mentioned, four rakats of Zohar, Asar, and Isha can be shortened to rakats. And when you're traveling, since it will be inconvenient, you can join the Zohar and the Asar Salah. And if you want, you can join the Maghrib and the Isha Salah. So when people join, it becomes thrice. So when you're traveling, anyone does, I have got no objection. There have been hadith showing that in times of difficulty, there's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari which says that it was raining very heavily and people could not, after Maghrib Salah, come again for the Isha Salah. So the Prophet joined. So during any calamity and any difficulty, the Prophet has given permission that you can join. But I do know there are some people who say, who oh, have to go to office, therefore I will join my Asar and Zohar together. Just for small petty things, you want to go shopping. You want to go shopping and then I'll take five hours for shopping, so I'll miss my Asar Salah, so I join my Zohar and Asar. This is not allowed. While traveling and in times of actual difficulties, the Prophet has given you permission. Otherwise, under normal circumstances, you should pray five times Salah every day. Hope that answers the question. Salam, Shakir Naik. Adan ki pahli shuruat. Pahli shuruat kisne ki aur kabhi hui. Aur kaha se huayi. Wa konsa desh mein huayi. The sister has a question that the Adan, how did it originate, in which land, and how did it take place? Sister, it took place in the land of Arabia, the city of Medina, and given in the hadith that we have, that when the mosque was constructed, the Prophet and the Sahaba they were discussing how to call the people. Some people suggested the drum beat, some people suggested the conch, and various suggestions were given. And the hadith says that a person, he in his vision, he heard the words of the Adhan, which I recited in my talk, by human voice, which came to the knowledge of the Prophet. And the Prophet agreed that whatever he heard, the words are very good. And there's no better way of calling the people to Salah this way and using the human 
voice. That's when the Prophet commanded that when you call people for salah, use your human voice instead of the other things that people use like drum, trumpet, etc. And it was in Medina. Hope that answers the question. We would now be starting the questions on the slips too. The procedure would be such. One question I would put now on the slip, then on the mic, my right hand side, again on the slip, then on the mic, on the left hand side, again on the slip, then on the sister, and such manner in a clockwise rotation. The question is from Brother Abdullah. He asks, there are several methods of performing Salah. Are all of them acceptable or is there only one common method of offering Salah? The brother asked the question that there are several ways of offering Salah and I do know of that. Are all of them acceptable, are all of them correct or there is only one common method? If you go to the market, you will find hundreds of books on describing the method of how to perform Salah. Most of them, they contain few or more unauthentic hadith. Most of them. There is only one common method of offering Salah. As our beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Adan, chapter number 18, hadith number 604, as well as in Sahih Bukhari, volume number nine, hadith 352, the Prophet said, pray as you have seen me praying. When you offer Salah, you should offer Salah as our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam offered Salah and no other way. So when it comes to the major part of the Salah, like where to keep your hands, how to stand in Qiyam, in Ruku, in Sujood, the various postures, all these, there is only one style, only one method, which is mentioned and given in the Sahih Hadith if you refer to them. There are a few options which a person has. For example, what you recite in Ruku. The Hadith says that sometimes the Prophet recited Subhan Rabbi Azim, that glory be to Allah who is supreme. Sometimes he recited Subhan Rabbi Azim of Hamdika, that glory be to Allah who is supreme and praise be to him. So there are a few duas, various different duas which the Prophet recited in Ruku, in Sujood, where a person has an option. For example, I told in Vitar, you have to offer all rakat. That is the commandment. Sometimes Prophet offered one, sometimes five, sometimes seven, most of the time three rakat. So there are options in certain things, mainly in recitation, in ruku, in sujud, etc. But the major part, the posture, how you stand, how do you sit, how do you bow, how do you prostrate, everything is only one common method, which is given in the Sai Hadith. The best book that I can recommend, which is available, and which is very concise, small book, and which contains authentic hadith, is the book, The Guide to Salah, by M.A. Saqib. If people have more time, and they want to read a bigger book, a book which gives more minute details, how do you go for sujood, what part of the body you touch first, how do you get up all the minute details, you can refer to the book, The Prayer of the Prophet from the beginning to the end, as if you see it, by Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin Al-Albani, Sheikh Albani. It gives the quotation of Sai Hadith, etc. You can refer to this book. But as the question is, that after the few recitation, the major part of Salah is only one type. And if you want to read these books, you can refer to the library of the Islamic Research Foundation, where these books are available. My name is Jagwinder Sidhu. I don't have an Islamic background, but uh, even my question is not exactly concerned with Salah. Can I ask that? Uh, we'll allow you questions on the topic or connected to the topic. Connected. But I actually have been looking for people to ask this question. I have not okay. been able as, to get this As one. an exception, because ah, you that, have that, been uh, why, that's why I came. on your interest, we would uh, allow you a question. Oh, that's actually two. Yes. Uh, we'll allow you one question. <laughs> <laughs> we made one exception. Don't let us make <laughs> Okay. The basic question which, which I have been asking, I met a couple of uh, my Muslim friends and also I went to Muhammad Ali Road and asked some Imams also. I, as far as I know, the meanings of Alif, Lam, Meem or Tasen uh, or Ha, Meem, all these are, have not been expounded by the Prophet. Or have they been told to the 